And before I get too far into this top end here, um, come down here to the flywheel cover. You can see I've got a, a nice size uh, metal washer. You don't want to use a screwdriver. Um, you need something that's nice and wide to distribute that pressure. Uh, if you poke a hole in that, then you're going to slowly lose oil and it'll look nasty. You uh, pretty much do the same thing up here. Uh, not enough yet. Especially hard to do with camera in one hand. Alright. I almost thought that was on top dead center for number two already. Okay. <laughs> Alright, here we've got a 14 millimeter socket. That's what you're going to need in here. You're going to crank this thing counterclockwise, which will spin the flywheel inside. And when that spins, these turn. Let's see. Kind of gives you an idea of what's going on back in here now. Um, I think, yeah, that spring's wedged all the way up against the lobe because of this valve in here that's bent and stuck. So, um, all right, that's probably about as good a place as any to uh, start to undo all this. Um, try to get into the uh, timing aspect of this when I put it back together. Um, but right now, what I've got to do is remove these two bolts, two bolts back there, and there's two here. And the same with two back here. Uh, once we get these um, removed from the lobes, uh, or I should say the cams, um, I'll take you to the next step. All right, I'll go ahead and show you this before I move too far. Um, I feel it's kind of important. All right, you see the white line right there. Um, I don't think this will focus without all the glare. And no. Okay, there. <laughs> That is my uh, 2T mark, um, top dead center, cylinder number two. And uh, this is probably the opposite of what I kind of wanted to do. Um, but when you're, uh, yeah, my lobes aren't in the position that they need to be. It's kind of the opposite. I could continue to spin this, but I think for now I'll leave it. Um, if I spin this around again, the lobes on the right and the left, instead of being inward, they're going to face outward. Um, and for the timing sake, that's the way you want this to be. Uh, you're going to be on that 2T mark. Um, these lobes are going to be pointing outward instead of inward. And on your gears over here, if you can see that line just at the top of the case, it's you can see how it runs even. And it's the same situation back here that I don't think I can get you focused on right there. All right? That's what it's going to look like. But, because these lobes are facing the wrong direction when you go around again, this one is going to have uh, the letters IN above it, and this one is going to have the letters EX. And when both sides are uh, lined up with the case, and that shows 2T, um, you know that your timing is set where it needs to be. So, in this case, since it's... Um, Pretty much the exact opposite of doing one more revolution. Uh, I think you could get away with it, but um, the uh, proper way, I guess, would be bring that around again. Uh, the lobes are going to face the other direction. You're going to make sure that those two lines, say IN and EX, and are uh, running at the same um, running level with the top of the case, and uh, that's your timing. And from the top of the case, all the way over to the other side, you count the rivets, there should be 33. Uh, that lets you know that you don't have some uh, odd situation with the teeth jumping or uh, some weird slack in the chain, that kind of thing. Um, and if you notice here, I've got these bolts right here. Once you remove both of these, you can take this one, thread it into this, which they're all like that. This one has one right here as well. 
um, that gives you something to hold on to to pull this out. So, let's see. All right, there we go. Uh, if you notice too, you've got these little guides. You want to be careful not to lose one of those. Um, they're kind of interchangeable. They can be stuck inside of this, or you can leave them inside of the head. Uh, wherever they are, just make sure they stay there. Um, may not be detrimental uh, if you lose one, but they serve a purpose. They're there. Keep a hold of them. Okay, you can see I've got uh, all the brackets off on the cam lobes back here for the valves, um, camshafts, valves, lobes, whatever. Uh, I've got the chain guide pulled off as well. Um, this is just kind of one helpful bit. Uh, your bracket here that holds the, um, the two camshafts uh, at the top of that together, that is easiest to remove with a uh, small screwdriver. Um, what happens though, uh, on my bike, and I think it's kind of typical for some reason, when you go to remove this and you're going to put pressure underneath, um, this side tends to break free before this side does, which it may happen either way. Uh, it depends on where you're putting that pressure. Um, and if this side is what breaks first, then what you're going to do is press over here and put weight on this side with your free hand and it will uh, lift up the other end as well. Um, and that gets rid of all these, and let's see here. Um, I like to keep all this stuff together as best I can. Um, it is important that uh, <laughs> you keep track of where the shorter and the longer bolts uh, are located. Um, fairly important. So each time I take one of these pieces out, I try to put the bolts right back in where they were. And, excuse the other crap in my garage. Set everything right here on this plastic bag, and then I'll bring another plastic bag out, cover it, and keep that clean until uh, I come out to do the next part of this. Um, so that uh, leaves us there. Um, I don't know that there's much else at this point I can uh, point out to you. Um, the next step to get these loose is to take off the cam chain tensioner here. Um, uh, I got to use an open end wrench on this one, uh, not necessarily open ended, but a standard wrench. This one's just too close to the head to get a socket on there the right way. If you got one flexible, it'll work. But um, you want to alternate loosening each one just a few turns to keep the, uh, the spring and the sleeve inside from kinking up on you. Um, all right, so I'll get that broke free. Pick the video back up in just a second. All right, see my cam chain tensioner off of there? That spring and that sleeve, but the uh, spring inside up in here forces down onto the actual tensioner. Um, one thing that's important right now is while this is undone, you want to avoid spinning this engine, um, if at all possible, because it's just going to cause you a bigger headache trying to reset the timing. Um, when you uh, put these lobes back in, the camshafts back in. Um, so right now, you can see that's still set with uh, cylinder number two, top dead center. Um, this, is, uh, this is the important thing when I was talking about earlier. Um, the way everything up in here lines up, you can see you've got a triangle that forms with these uh, lines in the center, and then the lines on each side are uh, running the same elevation, so to speak, <laughs> um, with the edges of the uh, case. Um, but like I said, the way the book tells you and anybody will show you, you want to spin this around top dead center one more time so that these lobes are facing outward, not inward. And where you see the IN and the EXs, uh, those will be on the outer edge. There will be EX, that line right there and the I in line right there will be where that line's showing. Um, all right, I'm going to need two hands to pull this off of here. Uh, but just to help you understand, this is going to be a little tough at first because there's still um, tension on the chain. Um, when you want to remove these, you're going to you're going to pull up on it, but you're going to roll it so that these teeth just kind of move you over till you can get some slack in that chain again. Um, 
All right, so there you can see I slid that over. Wasn't too terribly difficult. And this valve right here is the one I'm having problems with. Um, right now I can tell, uh, well you can see there's some not so great wear to this rocker arm where it was knocked sideways. Take a look at this. Fortunately, the little feet aren't broken, but uh, the screw on the top isn't isn't a good thing by any means. Um, really, it's nothing because I didn't have to go very far with it sitting that way. So uh, it's not even it's not even to the point where you can feel it, but you can see it wasn't wearing on that the right way. Um, okay, important thing. <laughs> I uh, when I had this open a couple days ago. I had to order a new rocker arm, I ended up ordering four. Um, one of these had broken, one was damaged where I didn't feel that it was uh, safe to use again. And one of them that were still good, I lost. I have no idea what happened to it. I'm fairly certain somehow my two-year-old son got a hold of it. I'm also missing a couple of other small tools. Uh, so just like that. Do not lose these. They are rather expensive. If you buy a brand new one, it's 40 to 50 bucks. Um, if you buy them used, you can find them for 20. Anybody who may not know what they're worth or may not care to scam me, you may get them for 10. Uh, you're doing good if you do. Um, all right, so right there inside that valve spring, I can still see uh, one of the collets, keepers, whichever you want to call it. Um, I have to get a magnet and grab that. And I think if you can follow right there where I'm pointing. I'm fairly certain that that is the other side of the keeper. So uh, get this off of here. Alright, you got an inner spring and an outer spring. And if you look, you can see right there there's one side of the keeper. Um, I guess the technical term is call it. I don't know where that comes from. It sounds ridiculous. All right, sit that guy aside for a second. Here we've got our smaller one. I don't, nothing real important to tell you about that. All right, and now about the only way to do this because I don't see what I thought I saw. Uh, come over and grab my magnet and we are going to start searching through this oil down in here and um, if we're lucky I will find that second half of the valve stem keeper now I just happened to uh, pick this up from my uh, wife's grandparents um, a whole bunch of tools in their garage uh, had this for a little while and it's not been useful until working on this bike um, this is a really strong magnet. I have no idea what it ever came out of, but uh, basically whatever we can't see in here, it's going to grab a hold of. All right, that sounded good. There it is. Whoa, sorry about that. All right, there it was. That's the other half of that keeper. Um, so, <laughs> you can see you got little pulls of oil, more so towards the front. Um, this is a great thing to have. So, a magnet of any kind, uh, maybe not necessarily this strong. Can't get that to drip. But uh, now we got both of our keepers back together. And you can see, like I said, that's a good magnet. <laughs> um, all right, so that is the valve that's our problem. Uh, before I can do anything with this, uh, I'm gonna have to remove both of these uh, camshafts, and then we're going to start working our way across where you see the bolt there, or there, there's some in the middle section and uh, on over, and um, you've got a bolt uh, for the chain guide on the exhaust side of the motor here. Uh, you have to remove, so we'll get those out of the way. All right, um, all the rockers out of the way, cams out of the way. Uh, here's something that's going to be helpful to you. Um, use whatever you got, string, some wire. These little tiny bungees worked out for me. Um, 
try to keep the tension on this chain so that down in here in your clutch cover you don't allow this to slip off of the uh, the gears uh, inside um, there's another gasket that you're supposed to replace when you remove this um, you're going to lose half your oil if you uh, break this off plus you have to fool with the uh, stinking clutch cable um, it's not the easiest thing in the world uh, so save yourself some more trouble um, try to keep that taut uh, as you're working through it you're going to need an extra pair of hands at some point um, maybe eh, maybe not in our situation because all I need to do is tap out the old valve down in here slide the new one up in and uh, I can set this right back down so I don't need to do a whole lot with it um, assuming I don't find any more damage so uh, there you go uh, one thing I'll recommend step back over here where I've got all my parts laid out um, my exhaust side my intake side um, I'm gonna recommend trying to keep your rocker arms uh, together so that when you put this back in you have to do minimal adjustments um, hopefully not at all but that's unlikely uh, so yeah keep all your intakes and your exhaust together so that your clearances should be near what they were before assuming they were correct um, all right back over and the only thing left for me to do now is uh, start breaking free some bolts um, this here on the outside is for the chain guide if you can see that then we got a bolt there here and then all the way across uh, can get you to, there you go you got your two more you get the idea um, gonna have to remove this top one uh, the guide should stay in place because it's bolted down here as well so it's not really gonna go anywhere um, you're gonna need to uh, unbolt this you're gonna lose some fluid I'm sure uh, hopefully it's not too crazy of a mess um, and that's really the only thing that should be uh, keeping us attached here and just because I haven't removed it yet um, simply because I haven't needed to is this guy right here you can see what I was talking about earlier there's that, uh, that little lip there that fits in the hole and then you put the head cover on and it's what keeps this uh, coolant hose coolant line um, attached to the head so you can pull this out and slide it out of the way and since we've already drained it there's nothing in there obviously um, so we'll uh, we'll all start breaking down and um, bring you back up when I have something else all right started separating this um, a couple of things I don't really remember reading so much through the manuals and online and things here's all these bolts um, you can see they're quite long one thing you need to watch out for is the washer not like there's really too far it can go you're taking the engine apart you'll find it um, these have a tendency to stay inside the head um, so when you pull this out it'll probably stay in place just because of the uh, the oil that's keeping it there but um, make sure each one of these you pull out you keep track of this washer uh, the other thing is this one is about an inch shorter than the rest that's the one that goes right here um, sorry right here <laughs> uh, that's the one right by itself on the far side um, you'll need to disconnect this here uh, I put the bolt back in just to make sure I didn't lose track of it same thing over here this is for the uh, chain guide which if you look now you can see the bar I put I put that back in and your guide's right there next to it that's the black piece um, all the bolts out I loosened the carburetor side um, of these rubber intakes um, and really all you have to do is uh, push them apart and I already separated the other side so those come apart pretty easy I have heard there's trouble to put them back in sometimes you have to boil these things into water for about a half an hour to get them soft enough um, so all right right there you can see that little split um, if you just start 
pulling up on this like I did, you're going to take the cylinder head with you too. Um, so I had a little bit of oil that started leaking off the side over there and had to stop myself and figure out what was going on. Uh, make sure you don't forget about this little bolt down here. Uh, that's a 10 millimeter. Um, all of these coming out of the top, this thing here on the side as well as this one, those are 12s. So, uh, and also I'm going to encourage you not to use, um, not to use anything other than if you have them, the standard bit, uh, standard bit, the standard socket. Um, if you don't understand that, I'm talking about having the six points. Uh, when you're going with something like this, dang on it, I apologize. When you've got all this extra room for error, these bolts in here are torqued down pretty good. Um, you just want to be careful, extra careful, uh, not to strip those out because well, what are you going to do then? Um, all right, so what I found the best way to do that, like I said, loosen up your boots, uh, double check, make sure you've actually gotten all your bolts loose. Um, I started, you can see the big gap here. I started back here, this big flathead screwdriver. I was, this is really the only place you can do it. Um, you got the cylinders here and the actual head up here with your valves. I was able to just lift up and press that apart. So that gave me my separation. There's a gasket. You want to pay attention to what it's doing. Um, back up again. Sorry, I'm focusing on my eyes and not this camera screen. But uh, pay attention to that. Try not to damage it. Um, and uh, that's probably about all I can handle for now with uh, a camera in my hand. And it's probably about all I'm going to get to tonight. I'm going to need another set of hands. Uh, to lift this up, tap out that old valve, shove the uh, new one back in, um, and have to deal with that chain being in the way. So, um, all right, I think this is probably where I'll stop, and we will call this part one just for time's sake and the size of uh, these files.